Hello and welcome back. In this video I'll show you how we can take our based and realigned model and run through the segmentation tool. Um, the model doesn't need to be uh, necessarily based or certainly not aligned by any means to, to use this tool, the segmentation tool. Um, the only requirement is it just needs to be a manifold object. So um, it can't be like the, the scan that's on the bottom there with the blue boundary. Um, it has to be a solid manifold. Um, so to achieve that requirement, you could run through the model builder that will work every time, um, or there's many other ways to do it. However you get there, that's up to you. Um, but the only requirement is that it does need to be solid or manifold. So um, that's our starting point, and we'll just go through the tool. So with that model active, I'll go ahead and uh, click on the uh, dental segmentation uh, tool that's on the uh, right side down at the bottom. And it presents us with a, a few options here. Um, mainly, the only one we need to consider is how many teeth there are. So um, in this case, there are 14, and that's the default value. The other two uh, parameters we don't really need to get into right now, um, but those are just more advanced parameters that we can toy with later. Um, this little pop-up comes up and says there is already segmentation. Would you like to load it or uh, overwrite what's already there? So that's kind of a nice feature if you've already um, done this before, because this actually takes quite some time. Um, not a ton of time, but you know, quite a bit of time. You don't want to sit here for even three or four minutes. So um, if you've already done this on a model and it recognizes it as a model you've already done it on based on the name, um, then it, you're, you have the ability to just load that segmentation, which cuts out a vast majority of the time there. So uh, in this case, though, I did click on overwrite, so we're doing a fresh one. And uh, um, basically what we're going to see here for the next several minutes is, is just a lot of kind of waiting. Um, it's, but the point is here, I, I want it to, to be kind of raw, um, unedited, real time, exactly what you would see if you were using it. Granted, there's some differences based on, you know, your computer and your hardware, things like that. Um, but, you know, I kind of have a, a middle of the road laptop. It was pretty good about three or four years ago, I think, when I bought it. Um, but still, it's pretty old in uh, technology terms, and, and this is what I'm using. So it's, this is maybe a good baseline. Um, but it's uh, just kind of going through, doing some specific remeshes, um, some specific, uh, sorry, specific reductions in um, the triangle count, kind of get it to a, a, an accurate yet manageable size. So then we, when we do run it through the segmentation tool, um, it doesn't just take forever because really uh, the segmentation tool is just a bunch of number crunching. Um, it takes all of the vertices into account, all of the triangles, um, goes through each one and determines uh, the angles between them and uh, some other things like that. A lot more technical details actually, um, but it does a lot of number crunching. So um, the less number of triangles, um, especially if it's in the tens of thousands, um, then it's a whole lot, a whole lot quicker and, and uh, more manageable. So um, in this case, that's what we've done. It kind of got it to a manageable uh, triangle count and um, while also trying to maintain as much accuracy as possible. Uh, this little prompt comes up and uh, basically just says uh, it might look like this is um, uh, frozen, but it's just working. That's the truth in the background. It's just doing all that number crunching I was talking about. Um, the segmentation should take about two to three minutes on average, um, but no more than about five minutes. Um, if this is here for more than five to ten minutes, then you're probably safe to assume that something went wrong. And at that point, you can just exit out of um, both Mesh Mixer and uh, D3 Lab. So, um, I, actually, to be quite honest, though, um, that's never happened to me yet, um, where it just kind of times out. Um, if anything, it'll just close that prompt and give you some error. Uh, won't do the segmentation correctly, but it hasn't really timed out on me yet. Either way, I provide like a little timestamp there so you can kind of keep track of when did this start in case you get up and come back, um, just so you have an idea. And then it looks like it's done. And now it's um, importing all the different segments, combining them all, and then doing a kind of like an upscale remesh. Um, so it took a, at the triangle count of that, and now it's remeshing it specifically with Mesh Mixer's adaptive remesh, um, which is a type of remeshing where it um, 
it, it, it tries to maintain uh, the accuracy of the geometry as much as possible while increasing the triangle count and making it a little bit more dense. So um, it's a good remesh to use for this particular application. Um, and then it goes through and it takes a look at each segment. And if it's over a certain threshold uh, in size, it will consider it gingiva or model base and then combine those. That's what it's doing right now. And then everything else is considered to be teeth. And like I said in the very first video, um, the teeth may not be, there may be multiple segments within each tooth, and there might need to be a little bit of correction. Um, sometimes that happens, and sometimes the gingiva is not perfect. So um, I'll show you right now how to go through and, and how to correct some of those inaccuracies like this one right here. Um, that can happen and probably will happen actually in, in a lot of the cases. So this is how to um, kind of do some of the uh, basic corrections that you'll need to do if you even really need to do any of this. It kind of depends on what your application is, but um, this is what's typical, and I'll show you how to do that right now. Um, it's nice because these things are kind of uh, in face groups, color-coded. Um, once you have a, a select tool by pressing S, um, you can kind of change the size of that by using the um, left open bracket, square bracket, you can see down there in the left corner what I'm pressing. Uh, if you double click on the tooth, now you have the tooth selected. And I just select that part that was not um, a piece of the tooth originally, because uh, I'm attempting to try to include this now in the, in the tooth. Um, and I look at the back side there, the lingual side, and try to make sure everything looks okay there, since I'm going to be doing this anyway. Uh, and then up in uh, the power functions area, uh, there's now a tool called uh, smooth selected boundary. So I hit that and it just takes that kind of triangulated looking selection and makes it smooth, um, like a nice smooth boundary. And then I hit create face group and then it uh, makes that whole selection into a new face group. So um, it corrected that original um, kind of uh, inaccuracy and, and it was a pretty easy thing to do there. So that's what we've done on, on that tooth and I'll go through there's a couple more here, like on this one, it's broken into two different segments. So just double click both segments, kind of taking a look, making sure there's, it's all up to you how, how, how you know, specific you want to be. You can kind of remove a little bit more if you want, but for me, I'm just kind of going through it quickly. So I do the smooth again, smooth selected boundary, and then I create face group. And now those two segments are combined into one. And just kind of taking a look at the rest of the model, um, one way to kind of check things is just to double click on each tooth individually, kind of make sure the whole tooth is selected and all the you know boundaries look pretty good. Uh, just going through, double checking, and it looks like there's something a little funny with that one. So we'll get back into the uh, just normal select tool, double click the uh, tooth, and just add to that just a tiny bit. Go back up smooth and create face group. Now there are hotkeys for this, which is way faster. Um, let's see, this uh, smooth boundary is B and a create face group is control G, but I don't expect people to have these memorized. So I included them just up there to click on. So just in case you wanted to speed things up a little bit, you can do it that way too. Uh, same type of thing here. I'm just kind of refining it just a little bit more and uh, making it the one tooth. Resuming um, the individual teeth, kind of double checking. Everything's looking pretty good for our purposes. Okay, looking good. So gonna get the rest of the teeth here selected. This is another good kind of just double check thing to do. Once everything's selected, you can hit I and that will select everything else um, except for the teeth and then create face group. So then you're 100% sure that the only things remaining here are uh, just the teeth that you had and just the gingiva and the base of the model, and that is it. Uh, every once in a while, there can be you know, a couple little hidden triangles that maybe didn't get selected or, or something like that, and it can sometimes throw off some other things. So this is a really good way to ensure that all you have in terms of the face groups that you see are uh, the number of teeth, which is 14 plus one. And uh, that will do it every time. And now you have your refined segmented model uh, in real time. And uh, I guess a couple other things to note right here is as the tool finishes, it does uh, give you some output. 
um, as far as uh, statistically, how long did it take? And it starts keeping track the moment that pop-up comes up. So it does do some reduction and remeshing at first that's not included in this time. So just, you know, honest, fair warning, um, that part is not included in that time. But um, for me, from that pop-up um, until it came back and it loaded back into Mesh Mixer, um, it shows that time and then also the amount of time that uh, we took in Mesh Mixer to kind of tidy things up a little bit and then what the total time was. And again, this is also with me, you know, kind of recording things and um, having multiple things running at the same time, this little uh, pop-up um, keystroke thing and a few other things. So um, with nothing else running, it goes even in faster than that. So, um, but this is kind of just a, a good example straightforward example of uh, I think what the majority of decently scanned models would look like through the uh, dental segmentation tool. So thanks for watching and uh, if again if you like what you're, you're seeing here please make sure to like the video and, and subscribe to the channel. Um, you'll get a lot more updates and uh, also you can just see um, what the, the newest things uh, we have to offer here. So uh, thanks a lot for watching again and, and have a great day.